If you're not into filmmaking, you've probably never heard of Edelkrone before, uh, unless you've already watched Angus's video about their Flex Tilt Head 3D. You see, the thing is, Edelkrone so far didn't do affordable products. This is their slider in tripod head, the Flex Tilt Head 2, and it's 149 euros. It's intended to sit on a slider or tripod, and then it can swivel out like this and do all sorts of crazy things. Camera goes here. It's basically a solid slab of aluminum with some joints in between. This one is 29 euros, not including the clamp. The difference? I had to print some parts and assemble the head myself, and theoretically, it does all the same things as the version that costs five times as much. Just to put that into perspective, you could almost buy the 29 euro kit and a 3D printer, print all the parts for yourself and still end up with money saved compared to the 149 euro all metal version. So let's check out how and if that's possible. Right after I talk about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Whether you want to learn about design, business, cooking or filmmaking, Skillshare covers it all with over 25,000 online classes. Today's video covers filmmaking gear, and if you want to expand your horizon there, you can check out Introduction to Aerial Videography, Creative Direction for Drone Filming by Wild Rabbit Productions on Skillshare. There are folks who fly drones professionally, teaching you about how you can pull off impressive drone shots while still staying safe and legal. A Skillshare Premium Membership gives you unlimited access to all their courses and communities, and they're giving away a free two-month trial to my subscribers who click the link in the description below. So try them out, no strings attached. If you like them, it's only around 10 bucks a month after that. Thank you, Skillshare. So Ilkrone sounds like a German brand, but they're actually from Turkey. I already own some of their sliders uh, and the motorized head that goes with that. So when they reached out and asked if I wanted to check out the first product of their more affordable 3D printed Ortac line, Ortac, I don't know, uh, I was pretty excited to see what they had come up with. Unboxing the regular Flex Tilt Head 2 is pretty unspectacular. You get the fully assembled head, a hex key to adjust the joints, and a thread adapter so you can mount it to any tripod, slider, or other base. The Ortak head is different. The first thing I noticed was that the packaging was slightly thinner and felt a bit less premium, and that it's also way, way lighter. You get an assembly manual and a handful of machine parts, a few screws, and a single hex key to assemble everything. But even though this is a lower end product, everything still feels really well made. The one thing that I knew was going to be tricky was the friction joints. So it was great to see that Edelkrone included machined parts for every single moving joint in the kit. But the bulk of the parts are 3D printed. The files are up for download at the Edelkrone Ortak page. Obviously you'll get a set of STLs, either as individual files or as a full plate. I use the plate, works well, no issues whatsoever. But you also get step files and the SOLIDWORKS source files, which means you could very easily grab those files, import them into SOLIDWORKS or any other CAD program like Fusion 360 and modify them, whichever way you want. But you can't actually do that because the files are released without a license, which technically means all rights reserved, which is also why I'm not modifying them for now. I guess you are allowed to print them, um, but I have to clarify with Edelkrone what you can and can't do with the files beyond that. So they recommend and approve the Ultimaker 3 and S5, and also the Zax, Zax, never heard of that one. I used the Prusa Mark 3 and gave the parts a bit thicker shells all around to make them stiffer. Edelkrone actually recommend 90 to 100% infill, which honestly is quite an unusual setting for 3D printed parts. Obviously, since I'm making a video about Edelkrone anyways, why not use the Edelkrone slider to film the print? This is the slider one and head one. Uh, you know, that's why I have them in the first place, right? Now, when I say this worked beautifully, I actually mean it. It's super fascinating to see how well the printed and the machined parts fit together. The aluminum parts almost snap into the prints, even though there's no snapping mechanism here. 
There's no slack in any of the parts, which is great, since you don't want the finished head to wobble around. It's all just one size hex key that you need, but of course, I used my trusty cordless screwdriver because A, it's way faster, and B, I can set a torque limit to consistently tighten the M3 and M4 screws. The joints are these two part pieces that tie the arms together and clamp the printed parts against an aluminum shim. You know, you can't really expect consistent friction from rubbing two PLA parts together, so a shim may help with that. The two halves of the camera platform are connected with printed pins, but because they are printed upright with the layers aligned so that they'll break off at the slightest bending force, I don't actually trust them to hold my camera, so I'll use super glue on the mating surface. Also, I don't ever use the quarter 20 screw on my cameras. Instead, they have these 3D printed quick release plates basically permanently attached to them that fit in Manfrotto heads, my Jurian gimbal, and into these Arca Swiss style clamps that I have basically on all my tripods and anything that resembles a tripod head. So, of course, this head is getting an Arca clamp too. So overall, the assembly was actually pretty fast. Everything fit together well, and honestly, the Ortax flex tilt head does look pretty professional. Maybe if I hadn't used turquoise filament, but instead, you know, black, uh, I don't think anyone would double guess this head. It is significantly lighter than the all aluminum regular flex tilt head too, which is great for traveling, yet it doesn't actually feel weak or flimsy. So does it work for its intended purpose? Let's drop it into the intended platform. Off comes the ball head, and on goes the Edelkrone Ortec Flex Tilt Head 2. Wow, that actually that actually lines up perfectly. Nice. Yeah, that's that's the problem here. The Ortec head supposedly does up to two kilograms, four pounds. My camera is a good bit lighter than that, but it's super hard to adjust these joints uh, to still be loose enough so that it can still adjust the head, but be tight enough to keep the camera from sagging. Let me tighten these up a bit and see if that helps. So yeah, now it holds up, but. It's like super hard to adjust. It's not quite as bad as having two PLA parts just rubbed together on their own, where it'd probably get them to weld together in no time, but you know, it's still PLA rubbing against aluminum, and that's not great. Also, the noise this makes, like holy crap. I mean, this thing doesn't look out of place when you show up to a gig with it, but these squeaks will definitely get some heads turning. I mean, it holds up the camera now, but it still feels a bit stiff. But, you know, these things are probably something that can be solved relatively easily. I've already suggested to Edelkrone uh, to maybe just use two shims per joint, so that you'd not just get a PLA rubbing against aluminum, you'd get the rubbing action between two pieces of aluminum, um, like in the regular head. But maybe even just using nylon or Teflon washers in here would help a lot already. Also, I feel like the exact filament that you use has a massive influence on how smooth the action is going to be. You know, get a PLA that has a bit less of that glossy and squeaky surface and you may get much better controllability. Um, or maybe if you use something entirely different, like, I don't know, carbon fiber reinforced nylon, uh, it may actually be a totally different experience. But nonetheless, I still greatly respect Edelkrone for going forward with this idea. It's not like this is some leftover parts cobbled together into a DIY kit. The Ortac Flex Tilt Head 3D is using parts that were specifically designed and manufactured just for this kit. I think overall this is actually really well done, there's just that little issue that it's not really usable, but maybe I can figure out a way to still make these parts work. But also, Edelkrone have already said that they will continue improving the Ortec kit, and it feels like all it needs is just a few little tweaks to make this a real usable product. I got to say, the idea of printing the bulk of the parts yourself just makes so much sense, and I thought there would be an issue with everything fitting together properly, but that's been absolutely seamless. Printed home parts allow you to not just use whatever filament, color, etc. you want, but if you see the mechanical parts, 
as just an augment, just as a kit to add to your own designs and your own contraptions, that can open up so many more possibilities. Yeah, not everyone is going to design a completely new product from these exact aluminum parts, but think about the possibilities of a site like Thingiverse, or you imagine, or Prusa printers, where people who can design things like this can share their ideas and you can then print those yourself and make them functional by adding precision parts like these. So that can range from, I don't know, just making the head a bit wider uh, so you get a bit more surface area from, for the camera, just like with the uh, you know regular head, to making an entirely new lever system that maybe Edelkrone would have never thought of, but still being able to use Edelkrone kits for precision. I will need to check with Edelkrone whether they actually want this and whether you'll be able to modify their design, but there's so much potential beyond just saving a few bucks on manufacturing and shipping. But let's not forget that, it's still a really affordable concept. 29 euros is still cheaper than even the grey import knockoffs of the original flex tilt head. And the thing is, Edelkrone are just starting to see what potential 3D printing has when it comes to geometry. These parts are all super easy to print, no overhangs, literally nothing that would even be remotely challenging. They've already made use of one detail that the regular head does not have. The screw for the camera is usually threaded through the slot somewhere or passed through a larger hole that then is then sealed, uh, like here. But with the 3D printed head, because the camera plate is two halves already, they've just captured the screw like that while it's assembled. Easy. So let me know in the comments below what you think about the idea of printing some parts of the stuff you buy on your own printer. I'll be trying to make this one work for me and I'll update you in a bit on whether I've managed to do that. If you want to see that, make sure you're subscribed and have actually clicked that bell, otherwise you'll probably miss it. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can do that by leaving a like on the video. That's a huge morale boost for me. You can share the video with your friends or you can directly support the channel through Patreon or the YouTube memberships. I'm doing regular hangouts for supporters. In fact, there's one coming up really soon. Thank you to everyone who's already doing that and I will see you all in the next one. Oh, live streams. I feel like I should do some live streams again. Hmm.